Hello and welcome to Smoggle.com. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin and money laundering. How does the United Kingdom rank the money laundering risks of Bitcoin? Well, earlier this year, in October, the UK Treasury issued a report on the national risk in assessment of money laundering and terrorist financing. And in that report, they went through the risks of certain activities, certain instruments, as to the risks they posed for money laundering and terrorist financing. At the top of the list were cash, banks, accountants, lawyers, and other professional service providers. The UK Treasury deemed those to pose the highest risk for money laundering. At the bottom of the list were digital currencies like Bitcoin that the UK Treasury deemed to pose the lowest risk for money laundering and terrorist financing. Let's just take a quick look at some of the findings of the report. I'll provide a link to the report, both the 2015 report and the 2017 report from the UK Treasury. Well, let's just talk about what we mean by money laundering. The 2015 UK Treasury report provided a nice, tidy definition of money laundering. They say it occurs in three stages. The placement in which illicit proceeds are introduced into the financial system, layering in which the criminal attempts to separate those proceeds from the crime through a series of transactions, then integration where the illicit funds re-enter the economy disguised as legitimate funds. Now, some anti-Bitcoiners have overstated the use of Bitcoin as a money laundering instrument or even as an instrument for terrorist financing. However, according to the 2015 and the updated October 2017 UK Treasury report, digital currencies rank last among risk of money laundering instruments and facilitators behind cash, banks, accountants, lawyers, money service businesses, trust companies, real estate agents, high value dealers, retail betting, regulated casinos, new payment methods, and non-profit organizations. So here are some of the observations on money laundering from the UK Treasury. High risk at the top, no surprise, cash. Quote, high-end money laundering and cash-based money laundering remain the greatest areas of money laundering risk in the UK. I think they mentioned 45% of transactions in the UK currently are at about are at 45%, and that's down from about 60% a few years ago, and they expect that number to go lower. That's still a substantial portion of the economy that is cash-based in the UK. They note cash is inherently high risk due to it being untraceable, readily exchangeable, and anonymous. Cash money laundering can be assisted by exploiting UK and overseas financial and professional service industries so they can work with bankers, lawyers, and accountants to use cash as a money laundering instrument. And cash intensive businesses, these are legitimate businesses, can disguise criminal sources of wealth with no record. Examples they give are scrap metal wholesalers, which include, I suppose, gold in silver refiners, nail bars, takeaways, in England they call um, restaurants, that allow food to be taken to go as takeaways and storage warehouses. Just a couple of examples. Now, money launderers can often structure their cash, whether legally or illegally obtained, with the assistance of service professionals like lawyers and accountants. Banks are listed as a serious threat for money laundering. Obviously, wealth management. The complexity of wealth management in private banking services, including potentially high-risk formation of trusts and companies. These vulnerabilities can be exacerbated by the use of, again, of professional intermediaries, think lawyers and accountants, and the level of anonymity within the sector. Professional services, according to the report, the ability of lawyers and accountants to structure transactions pose a high money laundering risk. The National Crime Agency, the NCA, investigations show that criminals may use a combination of legal services to add layers of complexity to a transaction and hamper effective due diligence. Now, at the bottom of the list, they discuss digital currencies. And the NCA has accessed the risk of digital currency use for money laundering to be relatively low. Although NCA deems it likely the digital currencies are being used to launder low amounts at, um, at high volume, there is little evidence of them being used to launder large amounts of money. There remains little evidence of digital currencies being used to 
as an established tool for money laundering, and the money laundering risk is therefore still assessed to be low. And they're referring back to, that's the 2017 report language, referring back to the 2015 report. However, as the number of businesses accepting digital currency payments grows, there is an increasing risk of criminals using currencies to launder funds without needing to cash out into non-digital fiat currencies. So currently, there's few places you can go to launder your Bitcoin into fiat currency or just take goods or services direct in a direct exchange for Bitcoin because there are a few places that do that. Obviously, cash is accepted in most places, and therefore cash remains a far better money laundering instrument. The report notes that from a cybercrime perspective, digital currencies pose a larger threat. Obviously, if you're going to have cybercrime, you can use the uh, currency of choice among cyber criminals, which might be Bitcoin. And they mentioned that Bitcoin is often used in criminal to criminal transactions and that it constitutes the primary method of payments for those types of activities and for the purchase of illicit tools or services sold online in the cyber criminal marketplace. Now, as to terrorist financing, the NCA has assessed the risk of digital currency use for terrorist financing to be also low. However, the link between digital currencies and cyber-enabled crimes means the risk is likely to increase. So you guess you can have a criminal uh, conspiracy or activity that raises funds in Bitcoin, and then perhaps they can use that to finance the terrorist activities. What does all this mean, though? Well... I think a lot of people, the anti-Bitcoiners, are focusing or barking up the wrong tree in saying that Bitcoin itself is an instrument of money laundering. Money laundering is a crime that uses legitimate instruments, assets, and services in its commission. We saw above, you can use lawyers, and you can use accountants, you can use banks. That doesn't make those entities or those individuals uh, in general, criminals, it makes the specific actors, doesn't mean that a bank is illegal because banks could be used to commit money laundering. Doesn't mean cash is illegal because cash can be used to commit money laundering. So money laundering accomplished through the use of accountants, banks, or cash, or any combination thereof, doesn't make any of those illegal. Similarly, that Bitcoin or any other digital currency could be used in money laundering or the commission of crimes or the funding of terrorism doesn't make the Bitcoin inherently bad or illegal. And it's not only especially if there are absent a specific statute designating Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency as such. So if Bitcoin is used to money launder or in terrorist financing, I've heard the argument they can therefore go after anyone who's ever used Bitcoin for uh, money laundering because therefore Bitcoin would be deemed an instrument of money laundering. Now that goes against the concept of ex post facto laws. If Bitcoin is not designated as a money laundering instrument today, if they so determine, and there's no indication that anyone wants to do that, that Bitcoin is a money laundering instrument, that doesn't mean anybody who has conducted transactions before such a statute was passed is now guilty of money laundering that would be an ex post facto law which the constitution prohibits so currently bitcoin is not an instrument of money laundering nor is cash it, they can be used in money laundering but their existence as cash as lawyers as banks as bitcoin whatever they are are not illegal per se. They're only illegal in the sense that they're if they're used in the commission of money laundering. And then again, it's not the cash or the Bitcoin that's illegal, or the, it's the use of them in the commission of the crime of money laundering. But also, we have to point out in conclusion that Bitcoin is not currently a good choice for money laundering or terrorist financing because unlike cash it's not fully anonymous it, it's not it it's not untraceable the way cash is also and it's not accepted in many places so 
we can conclude that Bitcoin is not necessarily, and I agree with the conclusion of the UK Treasury, is not one of the better instruments for money laundering or terrorist financing. Thanks for listening.